our meeting via Zoom, we need to do a roll call attendance. So Courtney Meyer. Here. Sharon Parsons. Here. Judy Stone. Here. And I, Diana West, am also here. Absent is Denise Barstow-Mans and Adriana Slozinski. All right, first thing on our agenda is our guest, Brian Whetstone. So take it away, Brian. Thanks, Diana. And thank you all for letting me come tonight and just share a little bit about um, a query, I guess, that I have for um, Town of Hadley and the Hadley Historical Commission in particular. And um, I'm a teaching associate at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. I just uh, completed my PhD work there this uh, past fall um, and will be formally graduating in the spring. But um, I'm slated to teach a graduate seminar in cultural resource management uh, through the architecture department at UMass this coming spring that will meet on Fridays um, for like three hours in the afternoon that particular day. And I was hoping to um, have those students who enroll have some kind of you know, real world practical hands-on experience in cultural resource management. Um, and in the back of my head has been the process um, that just concluded not too long ago to update and expand the National Register of Historic Places documentation for the Porter Phelps Huntington Foundation on Route 47. That was, I worked on a team with Marla Miller, who's also a professor at UMass, to um, turn that site into a 114 acre historic district. Um, and through that project, I learned a lot about the history of Hadley and um, accessed a lot of Hadley's uh, prior um, historic documentation, largely through MACRIS, which is the Massachusetts cultural resource inventory system that has um, both National Register of Historic Places documentation on it, as well as what are called Form B, which is uh, the state's sort of, sort of standard inventory form that are done on individual sites and properties that just kind of details a brief history and, de and like describes the site from like an architectural standpoint. So with that project kind of behind me, I had wondered if there was a way for students in this class to engage with Hadley's built environment and its history. And um, I approached Diana and Denise, who Diana mentioned isn't here tonight, about um, whether the town of Hadley had any kind of preservation priorities or preservation documentation priorities that this class could um, maybe intersect with and help support in some way. So what I'm uh, more or less envisioning for the students is that um, they could possibly pick a building or a site in Hadley that hasn't been well documented in the past by existing inventories, and they could do some of the historical research that would maybe update and expand some of those inventory forms to provide um, you know, deeper historical context for some of the sites, um, as well as get some kind of hands-on experience uh, describing buildings, because it's a, a pretty technical way of writing about um, the built environment to describe it. And um, I didn't know if there were sites or, or buildings that Town of Hadley said, you know, we don't really know anything about this place. We'd love if there was some new research kind of uncovered about this. Um, but that's kind of why I approached um, Denise and Diana. And so I'm happy to um, happy to fit the class into any existing priorities. And if there are none, like there are there are other options for the class too. And the the thing I will say is that um, I'm, I'm hesitant to plan too much only because I'm slightly worried the class is going to get canceled due to enrollment. So there's only one person enrolled in the class <laughs> right now. So I, I don't actually know if the class is going to happen, which which makes like like this feel kind of like teetering and unsteady of a request to even bring here today. But um, that's kind of where I, I am at. And so I would just love to hear like any thoughts that any of you all have to that request. Um, 
yeah, so I'll I'll kind of leave it there and maybe we can just kind of chat about next steps potentially. The house that comes to my mind right away is the one that Porter Phelps Huntington just acquired across the street. Mm -hmm. Also owned by a member of the Huntington family through sessions. Yep. Yeah, that um, that farmhouse is now part of the new district. So we're very excited about that. Um, but yeah, there's potential for more research, I think, to be done on, on that side for sure. Have you looked at the other national districts listings of buildings in to see if there's anything there that might want to be expanded on? I, I haven't looked at it from a perspective to expand only because I know the, I might get the name wrong. It's like the Central Hadley Historic District. Mm -hmm. that, that that was, I think, actually expanded in the late 90s, early 2000s, I believe from like- Yeah, mid 90s, I think. Yeah. So I know that one had been expanded already. And then I think the only other two are Hockenham and North Hadley. Yeah. So, and I think Hockenham is more recent perhaps than North Hadley is. Um, but that is another, another good possibility to, I think, to look at some of the existing national register sites. This isn't a building, but it's recently brought to our attention that there is a ferry pole at the North end of the common that we need to do more research about. Can you, a ferry, a ferry what? Can you say that again? Pole, P-O-L-E. Ferry pole. That's where they would hitch the pole, the ferry to it when they dock. Oh, to bring oh people that's over awesome. from. <laughs> and you said it was at the north end of the common? Yes. Is it still there? Joseph Gronick brought it up when we went to the planning board meeting back in December. And so it was oh. on the list of things to research. Ooh. Because that would be good for some of our work. Too. Yeah. That there's would be house. very interesting. Oh, sorry. There's, there's, that's, okay. that's okay. There's a house on the south end of West Street that I couldn't find any information about, but it was from the 1800s. Um, I can pull up that address one second. Like there's got to be something about this house. <laughs> Hartsbrook Farm is the oldest farm in Hadley, and I mean, that is technically my extended family's farm, but I don't think there's really ever been any documentation about it, except like folklore, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. Um, uh, 141 West Street is a house I couldn't find any info on. Keeping in mind that, you know, the the addresses the numbers changed during like the late 90s um yeah so it's a little tricky to find but it was built in 1880 oh okay yeah this is I'm, this is fantastic i'm personally um curious about learning more about the um the buildings that are on Railroad Street, I think all of them might be in Macris, but having more information on those would be cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that is a good I think, starting place also. Brian, what is your timeline? Yeah, so the classes, um, let me pull up my like draft of the syllabus I have just to like make sure I'm all on the same page with this. The class will start in February because we have such a late um, semester mm -hmm. at UMass. Um, and like the, if it's gonna happen, the like, project component of it where students would sort of learn to inventory and document historic sites would be starting, I would say, after our spring break, which is the week of March 17th. So okay. like late March, I would say, is when students are going to kind of be 
out in the field, so to speak. So we um, could send you a couple more ideas if they come to mind. Yeah, yeah. There's like no, I, I don't think there's too much of a like pressed rush to try and get all this figured out right now, especially like in the next couple of weeks, I'll even know if the class is happening. <laughs> so um, yeah, that'll, that'll be the other other thing too. But this has already been really helpful to think about, um, you know, some sites and places that haven't received the same degree of attention mm -hmm. uh, as other places either. I hope it works out. I want to take your class. <laughs> You're welcome to audit. <laughs> I, 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 we're like, it's technically being offered through like the university without walls program as well. So uh, people outside of UMass can enroll, but they have to pay a fee, which is not very fun. But if you want to, you're <laughs> welcome to do it. Awesome. So, yeah. But yeah, thank you. This has been very helpful to think about some starting places for this class. So. Well, thank you. I hope it works out because this is beneficial for us and the whole town of Hadley. Yeah. Awesome. Yes, thank you. Well, I'll be in touch if I have any other follow-up questions or things like that. So thank you all. Have a good night. You too. Okay, so it looks like the Chase Bank people are here. That's Josh Klein. Welcome. Hello, thank you for having us. Sorry for running a few minutes late coming from the planning board. No worries. I I mean, the planning board is really the group you need to talk to. So um, <laughs> I, that was a great first step. So anything you want to share about the project or what you're looking for from us? Yeah, you know, we we know that the original, and it, I think as part of the formal site plan approval, it will kind of go through the historical commission. We know the Trader Joe's application, um, you know, back in 2000 when it went forward, went in front of the commission, and 2004 when they did the mall expansion, went in front of the commission. So we just wanted to kind of, as we prepare to formally file uh, applications with the zoning board as well as the um as well as the planning board, just kind of get any initial feedback, um, you know, or anything that we should kind of be aware of. I was just pulling up the plan to um, kind of show. So it, we are part of the Hampshire Mall. Um, we are looking to kind of develop, sorry, these were markups from my discussion with them. We were, we're looking to kind of develop the corner um, of South Maple and Russell. So this mm -hmm. is kind of where they're adding that additional turn lane today, um, kind of right next to where Trader Joe's is on the right. Um, and then as you kind of zoom into that, that area, you can kind of see here the chase development. Um, so you have kind of the building, um, which kind of is oriented with South Maple street, kind of have the parking and access around the building, kind of leading back to the, to the main aisle. Um, and then I thought I could just probably dual screen, kind of see some of the architecture, mm -hmm. um, as well, these are aren't the exact elevations for this site, but are just kind of similar elevations um, that we would see, you know, for this kind of redevelopment. Um, you know, kind of putting their focus on kind of their more um, kind of architecturally friendly corner element. They kind of call it the jewel box. Would be kind of at the corner, um, and then you can kind of see the differentiating of materials around the building. So, just again, wanted to you know open it up see if there was any questions, any feedback, anything we should be kind of aware of as we move forward with the project. So have you gone with this architectural style because that is like Chase's look, their aesthetic? Yeah, as they've rolled out, so they're they're looking, you know, this is their kind of expansion into this region as well as in the Northeast really revolves around um, kind of their new, um, you know, architecture as well as their new, kind of model, which is a little bit more focused towards financial planning and kind of those elements. So this is kind of Chase Bank branding um, is, you know, for this kind of region. Okay. So I was reading up on the bylaws so I would understand better what our role here is. And since this is not in a historic district or the village center, uh, I don't believe this has to follow any kind of uh, specific architectural style. It just has to sort of match what's around it. And so in this section of town, there's of course, it's very um, commercial. 
I wouldn't really say there's a specific architectural style that exists there except commercial. Um, I mean, I guess there are a couple buildings, like I think of the old People's Bank building that they made quite attractive. Um, so I don't think we have anything to say from a historical perspective or to try to um, fit a specific historical uh, style such as colonial. Um, and as far as I know, there's also no, uh, there's nothing of historic significance in this area. I don't know if anybody else has anything to add to that. I'm seeing shaking heads. It will be different from the rest of the buildings in the area. Yeah, it yeah. is very modern. Yeah, it's, it's definitely different. You know, it's got probably some to some similarities in terms of, I think, where some of WS is, you know, across the street, you know, kind of their out parcel redevelopment. But it is, you know, kind of a, a more modern kind of cleaned up look for the corner. What were the comments from the planning board? So the biggest, you know, kind of hurdle with this project is it requires dimensional relief. So we will have to go to the zoning board. And that was probably their biggest concern from a planning perspective. Um, so that was really, you know, they mentioned, I think, snow storage and things like that, but nothing insurmountable. I think their biggest concern is is really just the, the setback. So this will be actually in the mall parking lot. It won't be, won't have access to Route Nine directly, will it? Correct. It wouldn't. Um, it won't have direct access. You can kind of see my other markup. This driveway that exists today is actually being closed, and they're moving it about 500 feet um, away from the intersection. So it kind of will be kind of within the mall, all contained within the mall property. Oh, I guess we didn't know that was happening. That is a yeah, part of the mass DOT improvements. Well, I appreciate I appreciate the time. Again, we you know wanted to kind of get this in front of the commission and you know kind of appreciate the feedback. Thank you. We appreciate it as well. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. You too. You as well. Okay, that brings us into the flavors Ooh. of Cook Farm. Uh, solar project. I emailed this around. Um, I don't think uh, the person who sent it to me was able to join us tonight as I don't see them. So um, I, I don't think this is a problem. Everything it's within their own property. I, I was interested to learn about the um, uh, what's the word I want sort of the noted historic structures in that area because I wasn't overtly familiar with those. But I think it's pretty small. I mean, you will be able to see it from the road, which is kind of too bad. But I mean, I don't think we really have a leg to stand on if we were thoroughly opposed to it. Any other comments? I really can't say much seeing as how I have solar panels in my backyard, but <laughs> yeah. I don't have a way to go. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I don't have any strong opposition. Okay. All right, then. Uh, would it be appropriate for me to email them back and say that we don't oppose the project and they can go ahead as far as we are concerned? Sure. Yep. Great. All right. Moving right into old business, I just wanted it to be put on the record that we were asked to submit a letter in support of the 40 acres in its skirts historic district um, expansion listing on the National Register of Historic Places. So we did do that. Um, I believe everyone was able to view the letter before we submitted it. Um, I haven't heard anything since, but I guess according to Brian, it's kind of sounded like things went well. I have put up on our page on the town website that we would like at least a month's notice for request such as that. So if we need to call a meeting, we have ample time to do so. Mm -hmm. um, so that moving forward, hopefully we'll be able to manage those a little bit better. Uh, Two days wasn't enough for you, Diana? <laughs> 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 yeah. 
Wink, wink, wink. Sorry. <laughs> that one, she she sent it like maybe like a week ahead and it was Christmas time. And I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> so they did that to me a while back, a couple of years ago when they were getting into this historic district thing and wanted a letter. And I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I mean, I will probably still get some last minute requests, but at least hopefully this will mean that some of them will give us a longer lead time. Makes so sense. our wonderful sign project. So I contacted Carolyn, town administrator, about fundraising and sponsorship as a town commission. And I have a meeting scheduled with Carolyn and town treasurer Linda Sanderson on the 23rd to talk about that. I did do a little bit of research, just some quick Googling. And from what I understand is we can do fundraising. We just cannot accept money from people we do business with. So I don't know if that's the town overall or just us as a commission, mm -hmm. but it would make sense that, cause we're only so far the people we've done business with is the designer of the sign. I don't think he's gonna make a donation. Um, <laughs> the people who would ultimately fabricate the signs they're not going to make a donation. <laughs> and um, down the road, if we um, get the walking tour reprinted. So we have a very small pool of people that we would have to turn away. Um, so hopefully we will be able to move forward with that. Carolyn once again suggested we try to go forward with getting this in the capital projects um, budget. But I'm like, we tried that last year and we were told no. So I don't see how this year yeah. would be different from last year. And um, that was a rather long, arduous process that resulted in nothing for us. So hopefully my conversation with them next week will go better and I'll learn more. And then we can move forward with trying to uh, get the money for these signs. Right. Well, we, we do have our 2024 budget on here for later, there's no way we can put anything in the 2024 budget for it? So um, we did double our budget line from $300 to $600. Whoa. Um, so ultimately that is not going to cover, I think yeah. anything left for the signs. Um, I mean, this process goes back, I think to 2018 when we attempted to put this in our budget and we were told no, and then we asked CPA and they told us no. And then last year, Carolyn suggested the capital projects. We went that route and they told us no again. So at this point, I really only see sponsorships and um, other fundraising as an option. And um, as much as I dislike fundraising, like that is I think ultimately what we will have to do uh, if we are allowed to, which I hope we are. Uh, what time is the meeting on the 23rd? And would it be helpful if I joined? Um, yeah, probably. It's at 930 in the morning. Okay. It's on Zoom. I can send you the link. Mm, I might be able to make that. Okay. Yeah. yeah just send, me, send me the information. I can try to hop on. I've gone back to work full-time in person now. So my schedule is a lot tighter than it used to be. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or comments about the signs? Um, in, in terms of fundraising, I was just thinking, you know, if we end up uh, having either somebody underwrite the cost or we raise enough money to, well, I guess this is more for the, for the walking tour reprint, but if we were to get that paid for, I imagine we can't accept like, a five dollar donation when people go to pick one up at the library like we do now correct i'm mm -hmm. not sure okay so that would be a question we can ask on the 23rd yes okay russell school the committee is applying for cpa funds courtney and i worked on a letter that we want to submit on behalf of the historical commission in support of this project. Courtney, would you like to tell us more? Yeah, so um, so we closed the survey uh, at the beginning of the month. Um, we had 562 people uh, or 562 responses. 
Um, and the, um, the most popular option was to stabilize the building. And the second most was to rehab it and uh, keep it for town or community use. So um, we are going to the uh, select board tomorrow evening um, to give our recommendation to stabilize the building um, with the intention to have folks do something with it in the coming years. Um, and uh, so we've been you know, looking into uh, great opportunities and such um, and CPA is uh, number one on our list, um, the deadline is uh, February 1st. So we want to try to um, go for it to um, work on the roof, the um, uh, masonry, the foundation, and a fourth thing, um, the biggest priorities at this point. So about how much money are you going to ask for? 1.2 1.2 million is uh, what we need for the stabilization. Um, I don't know if Dan, are you there? I can't remember how much exactly we're asking for. Oh, there he is. Yeah, I'm, Hi, Dan. I'm currently working on it. Um, <laughs> I've got numbers and papers all over the place here. Um, we're trying to narrow it down. I mean, certainly that's, that's a uh, pretty close estimate as to what we're gonna need. There's other work that needs to be done, but we don't have, um, you know, from the, 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 the reports that the town paid for, the DRA and the old Mohawk don't itemize certain things. So mm. we don't have numbers in particular that we can extract from those reports to say, yes, this is what's needed for stabilization, uh, certainly in the, in the immediate future. So we'll, you know, we'll, you know, Put our application forward with the with the numbers that we do know, and um, you know, with the hope that in the in the not so distant future, we can gain support to continue stabilization and restoration and historic preservation of the structure. Um, so, um, you know, everything's looking good. Um, of course, we're gonna. I think we're gonna get a little bit of pushback from select board due to the fact that the numbers that we're gonna provide aren't being submitted by a, um, I think they need a, 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 a stamped architect or, or a registered design professional uh, to actually submit the numbers. I think we can get these numbers verified by such a person, i.e. our on-call consultant, Mr. Tuttle. Um, he's the last one to update these numbers. Um, his name will be on this report. Um, so, you know, if, if we could just convince the, the select board that, you know, hey, look, it, it's, it's, um, it's do or die on this, it's pass or play. The town has spoken through this survey and they want action. They've responded to the survey and they're expecting something to be on the town meeting warrant related to this issue. No more kicking the can down the road. It's either pass or play. So. You know, um, you know, I suggested to Alan, I said, well, maybe to get their attention, maybe we should apply for CPA funds for a study that would show how much it would cost to demolish the building and uh, redevelop the site. And he responded with the fact that, well, I don't think CPA is going to cover Dell militia. <laughs> And as well, it, it would leave you with open space. Yeah. That, you know, that's CPA. But, um, you know, his point's well taken. Um, but, you know, um, this is a serious matter. And, you know, this is something that, that affects, you know, it, it, it makes me, and at this point in my life, no difference. I mean, if, if the building comes down, it comes down. And it, we're going to pay uh, probably extra tax dollars for this building to come down, where if we stabilize the building, we're not going to pay extra tax dollars. We've already paid them. It's the CPA. And this project securely fits into the parameters of what CPA dictates. Um, it's historic restoration, historic stabilization. So, um, you know, I, 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 I don't know what more to say. 
um, we've done our, our due diligence and we will con- I, you know, continue to do this, you know, as long as need be till this project is completed as required by, you know, our mission statement as a building committee. So what is the select board's role in this? Like they, they appointed the committee. So that's why you're going to them because ultimately isn't it CPA's decision and then the town's decision to vote on it? Right. Uh, well, the, the, the select board can, I mean, what they should do is vote to support or not support the CPA applica- application. And the CPA, um, you know, we'll put this application into them and they should vote to support it or not support it. Um, as well as uh, the Historic Commission as well should vote to support or not support uh, application for CPA money to, to stabilize the building. Um, so that, you know, the, their role is to carry out the, what the town dictates. It all comes down to town meeting. And so if, you know, in my opinion and, and me as a taxpayer in this town, you know, if I, if I can't convince or our committee can't convince or the, the select board can't be convinced to recommend what the majority of town is recommending then I would, um, you know, be uh, encouraged to just go straight to petition and get this on the town meeting warrant by mm. petition. Yeah. Whether these numbers are fully vetted by the, you know, the reports that we paid for three times already, or whether they're, you know, drawn out of the air and completely arbitrary, the town is you know, is telling us through the survey, this is what they want. So mm-hmm. no matter what it costs, I mean, the library came in over budget, the senior center center came in under budget. So, you know, these numbers are pretty close to what we're going to do. And like I said, whether they're arbitrary or not, you know, we've done our due diligence. The town has paid for these reports several times over. As a taxpayer, I don't feel like I want to pay for another report. I'm happy to have these numbers verified. Um, but, you know, I want action. And I, I'm, I'm sure that the naysayers, the people who don't want the project to go forward and they want the building t- to come down, they want action. Mm-hmm. So it behooves select board to get this issue onto the town meeting floor ASAP yeah. as these uh, recommended stabilization efforts are, uh, you know, time is of the essence. They are an immediate need for this building at this point in time. Okay, so our action here right now is to have a vote to support the CPA application. So do I have a motion to do that? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. <clears throat> All right, we have to do a roll call vote. Courtney? Yes. Sherry? Yes. Judy? Yes. And I, Diana West, also vote yes. So it passes unanimously. Thank you. Welcome. Um, wish you the best of luck. I will sign a petition if needed to get it onto town meeting floor. Um, I really hope we can finally move forward with doing something with the building. Mm-hmm. And Jane said that, didn't Jane say that we only needed 10 people, Dan, to sign a p- petition? That's what she said, but I, yeah. you know, I would, I, you know, I'm not, I would not hesitate if, if, like I said, if we can't convince and the, you know, if select board isn't convinced, I will get as many signatures as I possibly can. Right. I think more, more the merrier in this circumstance. Yeah. Sure. And, and, and beyond that, um, it's important for the people who responded to the survey in positive or, ne- you know, to, you know, make sure and get them to show up at the town meeting to vote for this because, you know, certainly the, the, um, you know, the, the people who would vote to demolish are the minority but it's not very difficult to get a minority of people to town meeting. Mm-hmm. It's much more difficult to get the people, the majority of the people there who, you know, so it's important to, to contact those people as well. Is that a, do we have to pass that with a two thirds majority? CPA? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think it's a simple majority. Um, uh, maybe farther on down the road, if the funds are to increase, we might need a two-thirds vote or something like that, but I'm not sure. All right. Just wanting to know what we're up against. 
I think you make a good point that it would cost more to demolish it than it would to stabilize it at this point in time in terms of the tax dollar, because I've been hearing an awful lot of complaints about the new assessments and the increase in property taxes in the last bill. Yes, well, certainly if you can't use CPA money to, to do a demolition, it's coming out of our pockets. Right. Yeah. And we in Handley, we have CPA and we do use it, but we don't use it all the, to the full extent that we can. So I think this is a good use to prove that this money is there. We're not using it for anything else. Let's use it for this. Yeah. And, you know, um, it's, you know, they have been doing a great job at the CPA committee uh, dispersing that money and using it for um, even the most marginal of appropriate, uh, according to CPA guidelines. Um, you know, we've got, you know, cemeteries are in great shape now, not that, you know, a lot of people really see that every day. You know, they see this building every day. And, the, you know, the, um, the park and rec is, has done a great uh, deal of uh, work with the uh, money from CPA. And uh, they, you know, the town was able to uh, bond uh, half of the work for the latest project. So they do have uh, money in pocket for this project. Um, of course, any, since uh, the, the uh, Historic Commission did a great job creating historic preservations for North Hadley Hall, any exterior work to that building is also uh, eligible for CPA money. And I would not hesitate to vote for that if that item came up first. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's important to do these things as soon as possible. I'm, I'm glad that, uh, that uh, Joe and Rick got that building up north, and I'm sure they'll do it justice without a doubt. But they qualify for, for CPA money. And uh, I told them both, I'll vote for that if you apply. And uh, so far, they haven't, you know, I, I don't know of an application into them. Uh, but, um, you know, time is of the essence on this building where, you know, North Hadley Hall is, I've been through that building as well. And it's, you know, regardless of what people may think, that building's in pretty good shape. And it's going to survive for many, many years. So, um, yeah, cross your fingers. Okay, um, to move the agenda along, is there, are there any final comments about Russell School? What's the fourth item you were trying to think of, the West Portico, Courtney? Or is that part of the no, masonry? It was um, unstable grades. Oh, okay, thank you. Yeah, certainly the other the other things that need to be done would be gutters. Um, there's, there's no specific estimate for gutters that I can find. Um, the portico work certainly needs to be done. Um, I think that would be our next, uh, you know, we could, we could get an estimate for gutters and we could, you know, we could probably do a bunch of the portico work and window work and stuff in house. Um, I know that, uh, I see that on select board agenda for tomorrow, the fire department is going to ask about use for the North Hadley station or Russell school for training facilities. So I'm going to go to that meeting and find out what that's all about and see if, uh, you know, see if we can work with Mike. I know that uh, well, last time I spoke with him, uh, he, you know, they, they got a, uh, you know, like a genie lift or a JLG lift to do uh, maintenance on North Hadley station. And certainly that lift could be used at Russell school to do work in house uh, if, if need be. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, the, certainly, you know, without a doubt, there are great resources as well. The volunteer fire department in town certainly would, would, would help fix up that building if they were gonna use it in the future. Okay. Thank you for all your work on this. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Thanks, Dan. Okay, walking tour reprint. We're gonna ask at our meeting next week about funding for that and if we can sell advertising and if we can then charge for it down the road. Are there any other updates about that? Um, I'm still sort of gradually working on it. Um, all the photos are in. Um, I reached out, I sent a letter to one of my neighbors to see if we could meet at some point. Um, because he is, I think I mentioned this to you guys last year or last at the last meeting that he's 12th generation Hadley. Um, and so I bet you, he has a lot of stories that we could potentially include. Um, 
And yeah, the only outstanding house is the 141 West Street that I can't find anything on. Hmm. Okay. All right, moving into new business. Uh, we already mentioned this, but we submitted our budget for fiscal year 2024. And our budget was previously $300 and we asked for $600. I have not heard anything back since I submitted that. So I'll update you guys if I hear anything more from Linda Sanderson or the finance committee. Um, well, will your response be if they ask you how you intend to spend that money? Would you save for the walking tour or the signs or? I think I put in an, like a little narrative that um, we're working on the sign project and we're working on reprinting the walking tour and we would use the money um, either to go towards fabrication of signs or um, towards the printing of the walking tour. Okay. Yep. Okay. Audio storytelling. Courtney, this was something you had sent around. Yes. Um, so audio is an app that uh, folks can put on their phones and um, pay a subscription for where uh, essentially when you're driving through anywhere, um, a story can pop up of the, um, the location that you're driving through. So I thought it might be uh, fun to upload some stories about Hadley. Um, we can pull from the driving tour or walking tour or signs or whatever. Um, it's my understanding that it's free to submit. Uh, you just have to pay if you're using the, the service. Um, that sounds like a really neat idea. Yeah. I would propose we finish the driving tour. <laughs> then we could turn our focus to possibly putting up some of it on this. Great. Yeah. What's going on with the driving tour, by the way? What's what's the deal with Stacy? I didn't put that on the agenda. Um, she said she was going to start. I think I got that update after our last meeting, but I have not heard anything more for her. So I will check in with her to see if she has done anything. Okay, the next thing on the agenda, exonerate Mary Webster was also an idea Courtney floated by me. And I've been was thinking more about this. Mary wasn't actually convicted, right? That was part of the problem. For the townspeople, rather. Yeah. So I guess we wouldn't exonerate her, but we could look into offering an apology. Um, I don't think I have no idea where she would be buried. Maybe probably in Old Hadley Cemetery, but I don't think she has a grave marker. I think she's here um, at the the old in Hadley, Hadley Cemetery. The West. But does yeah. she have a marker? I don't know that she has a marker. I think her husband did, does, or her father-in-law, maybe. Hmm. Um, but again, the markers are all over the place after the flood. Yeah, so. yeah they're not in the right places necessarily anyway. So... So my idea would be that we could work on creating some kind of a public apology um, or put up either a grave marker or a marker by where her house was with more information. Okay. But again, I think we should try to finish off some of the projects we've got right now. Yep. Before we move into yeah. some. Her, her house was on Cemetery Road, wasn't it? What is yeah. currently Cemetery I think Road. it's the... The corner of Cemetery Road and West Street. Yeah. Yeah. It's my understanding it's right where that white fence is behind um, 29 West Street. Okay. Um, okay. Next up, Fairy Pole. I mentioned this earlier when Brian was here. I have not done any research on this, but when we went to the planning board in December, uh, Joseph Grodnick mentioned that there is an old fairy pole that exists at the north end of the common where I guess the fairy from Hatfield would come and hitch to it. And that is all the information I know right now. 
So you don't know where? Is it like on the dike? Is it? It must be. I wonder if it's even. Dike wasn't like, there. The dike wasn't there. The dike wasn't there. You're right. So where could it be? I mean, there's a to pole take there, a walk. I think it's a new pole. <laughs> what do you think, Courtney? There's a pole there that's like three feet tall, but I don't think that's the pole. I think it's just to prevent people from driving on the dike. Hmm. All right, I can email Dr. Z and see if he can give me any more information. I don't know if I have an email, but I can I can reach out to him. Because he, he could be mixed up as well about what he's talking about, I don't know. Okay, so there's two things I forgot to put in this agenda that are coming under any other business. And that is to approve the minutes from November. Uh, Corny, I think you sent those out after our November meeting. I think yes, I within a couple of days. Okay, great. I couldn't um, find them. I went looking. <laughs> I think I you look on the drive back at the day. Hold on, I can pull them up. I think I, I have them. Because I actually got a records request from someone recently for our minutes from 2021 and 2022. Hmm. And I was like, anything you're looking for specifically? And the guy never got back to me after I sent them to him. So who knows what's going on there? Um, here, I'll share my screen. Why don't you? Okay. Anyway, if, if everyone could just skim these and then we can have a vote. I read them the other day, okay, so I'm okay. Then would you like to make a motion to accept them? Yes, I'll move that we accept the, meet, the minutes of the November 15th meeting as written. Okay. I will second that. Judy, do you need another minute or two? No, that's fine. It's all coming back to me. I know I've read them, but I couldn't find them today when I was looking for it. Ah, okay, great. All right. So without with no further discussion, I'm going to take a roll call vote. Courtney? Yes. Uh, Sherry? Yes. Judy? Yes. And I, Dino West, also vote yes. So passes unanimously. And then the last thing I forgot to put on the agenda was the annual report. Um, apparently, I have to write one. Um, I'm going to look at what I wrote last year and um, update accordingly. No one's approached me about this, but I, I was looking at the minutes from last year and it was in there to do this. So I was like, oh, yeah, it must be about that time. Yeah. So I'll work on that and then I'll send around a draft for everybody's opinion. Great. Okay. Well, this was a robust agenda and we managed to do it in 51 minutes. So I have, I have one thing. I'm just going to ask anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, one of my neighbors um, who is at, I think, 15 West Street, um, she sent me a text, um, which if you don't mind, I'll just read. Oh, my God, my car. Go to sleep. Okay. Um, she said, I think I mentioned my idea of converting my garage into another unit, like an in-law apartment. I met with the architect today. I also spoke with Tim Nyher, the prior building commissioner. commissioner. Tim said I should present the plan to um, the historical commission because the comment is on the national register. My architect is on the historical commission of this town and has some familiar familiarity with how it works. Um, I know you're on the commission. I'd like to speak with you about the process and requirements. Are there any requirements? We didn't do anything for our house. <laughs> this is an area, again, like when with the Chase Bank guys, I'm just not knowledgeable enough about what our mm. role is. And like I said, I was reading the bylaws earlier today, and it's just incredibly vague mm -hmm. about what we're supposed to do. And um, I mean, as far as I know, I don't think we have any say on the interior. No, I don't um, think so either. I think if, if someone in this day and age were to tear down a historic house on West Street and put up, say, a ranch, 
then I think we could say, no, that doesn't fit the neighborhood. It needs to be in X, Y, Z style. Okay. But I, I mean, if Tim Neihart says she's supposed to come to us with her plans, then I welcome her to come to us with her plans. And I'm sure we will approve them unless they are outrageous and she's going to build a castle out of her garage. Right. Yeah. Um, but but I think it, if it's completely the interior, then I don't think we have anything we can say. Oh. It will affect the exterior because there won't be garage doors anymore, but garage doors wouldn't be historically accurate to the house anyway. So, yeah. So I think I would I, say the houses her. are not historically designated, I don't think, even though some of them are. But, yeah. um, um, but I think mainly it's the common itself that is the primary. I'm going to try to pull up what this house looks like. Let me make sure I have the address right. Oh, wait, 15? This is a ranch. Is that 15? Um, yeah, it might be 17. One second. Oh, the house with the funky windows? That little garage? No, nope, not 17. Sorry. Um, It is... Seven. Seven West Street. So she's already done a lot um, of rest. I would maybe say restoration of the of the house. Um, the porch was enclosed, and she took that all out. So it's now like a farmhouse porch, like it had been before. Um, so everything that she's done so far mm. has been really good. Um, so I don't imagine she'll do anything crazy. Yeah. Yeah, I would just. I mean. I know there are rules about apartments and in-law suites. So yeah. but yeah. that again isn't us. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. So I if we were not permitted, actually. That is well, if you call it an in-law suite, it's allowed, but you can't put an apartment anymore. Yeah. I don't I, I don't know. But that I think would be planning board and the building commissioner. Um yeah. But if she would like to come to our March meeting, then she is more than welcome to. Okay. Sounds good. Should I reach out to Tim to clarify it all or just? That could be helpful um, if you're willing to do that, just to, if he can sh shed some light on what he thinks we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Okay. Because also when I was doing that research earlier today in the bylaws, like, I guess technically what should ha have happened is the Chase Bank people were supposed to send their proposal to the planning board and the planning board is supposed to reach out to us and work with us, which was not the order of operations here, but that's okay. Um, so I would suggest to your neighbor that she reach out to the planning board and ask them for their opinion about who she should talk to first. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. And just one other thing, Courtney, I'm sorry that you and Denise, I read a whole bunch of those things and I never reported back to anybody that I had read or watched, I should say, those um, downloads about Russell School, but. Oh, okay. They were very informative. Yeah, if you have yeah. any notes, feel free to um, send them along and we can incorporate them into ours. I think the only one that I would have any notes on is the, because so, so many of them were a really a waste of time, just somebody talking about their experiences in the Russell School. And I thought I have better things to do than listen to this, but I did. Um, the select board meeting where they toured the school, that was probably the most informative one of the whole bunch. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you, everyone. If there's nothing else, then I think we can adjourn.